Hi, I'm Akiva Martyr. And I'm Ariane Pinchot. And we're back with your We, we Got, Got a, a Glance. Glance. This Wednesday night and Thursday are Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaTzmanut. Ariane sat down with Speed Levitin and Hoodie Rosenberg from the Yom's Committee to find out what we can expect. I'm here with Hoodie Rosenberg and Speed Levitin, two members of the Yom HaTzmanut Yom HaZikaron Committee. Um, thanks so much for coming today, guys. Thanks for having us. What goes into planning such a big event on campus? Well, we've been getting together as a committee for the past two or three months already, trying to figure out what exactly we want the program to look like, uh, who should be our speakers, what kind of music we're going to have at the Hagiga, and it's been a lot of fun working with everybody. That sounds like a lot of work. That's awesome. And what goes, what is going to be different about this year's Yom HaTzmanut and Yom HaZikaron than previous years? Well, we're following the same formula that has been very successful in the past. We wanted to show the student body how many soldiers are on campus that have personally served in the IDF. So we decided to profile the soldiers and we put together a short video that we are going to be showing at the Tech S that really shows about 16 of our soldiers and how the IDF has impacted them. And we're really hoping that aspect of the program will really help people connect to Yom HaZikaron. That's really great. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going to be happening in the afternoon in Yom HaTzmanut? Well, we're planning on taking the traditional barbecue to the next level this year. We're actually going to be making it burgers bar themed so we can kind of bring a piece of Israel into the barbecue. There's also going to be a lot of the fun activities that you've come to know and love at, Yom Hatz, at the Yom Hatz Movement Celebration, uh, including ski ball, giant ping pong, and some pinball machines. That sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you, Hoodie and Speak, for coming. Everyone should make sure to head to the Yom Hatzikaron and Yom Hatz Movement Programming. It's going to be awesome. Now that classes have ended and reading week has begun, we want to wish everyone good luck with their studies. Summer is right around the corner, but until then, keep up the good work and study hard. And now over to Abigail with events. Hi, I'm Abigail Adler. Seeking out awesome end-of-the-year events, join Yeshiva Activities Society for its very first open mic night. Let loose during finals through stand-up, poetry, comedy, or prose. Check your email for the sign-up sheet to perform or to show up and enjoy the acts. The event will take place in the Sky Cap tonight at 8.30. You know what they say, if you've got it, flaunt it. Also, don't miss out on all of the amazing events taking place throughout Yom, Yom Azikaron and Yom Atzmaut. It all begins Wednesday night at 8 p.m. in Lamport Auditorium for what is guaranteed to be a very moving tech -est. The events continue late Wednesday night at the Max Stern Athletic Center for a fun night of dancing and celebration as we bring in Yom Atzmaut. Thursday, the celebrations recommence early as students who are encouraged to wear blue and white gather on the Wilt campus. At 9.15, there will be a Yom Yun for men and a separate Yom Yun and brunch for women. At 1 p.m., the day continues with great food in art gallery and exciting activities. Buses will be leaving Barrett at 7 p.m. Wednesday night, 7 a.m. Thursday morning, and 12.30 p.m. Thursday afternoon. This all-day Yom Mood event is always one of the most exciting days of the semester, and this year will be no different. These are only some of the many events taking place on campus this week. To learn about more, be sure to check out yu.edu slash events. And now over to Benjamin with sports. Hi, I'm Benjamin Zerman here at the Shield News Weekly Max Live Sports segment. To start, I would love to hear some comments on my beard. I've been working hard on it for Svira and would love to hear some positive feedback. In more pertaining matters, the YU men's tennis team finished the regular season with an undefeated record of 7-0 in Skyline play and 11-3 overall. In fact, Yeshiva has won 15 consecutive conference matches dating back to 2014. I heard if you want to see Ghost play tennis, you should check out your local tennis corps. This season, the Maccabees have been led by junior David Papis alone, who went 10-2 in number one singles competitions. He also won 9 out of his 10 contests as number one doubles. I heard he has hundreds of offers to be a waiter because he's such a great server. Yeshiva will aim for its third straight automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. Last season, the Maccabees won their first NCAA tournament match in school history by defeating Colby Sawyer College 5-3. The Yeshiva University's men's baseball team earned its first two wins of the season in its last two games of the season over Vaughn College. The Maccabees won the first game 11-7 while winning the second contest 21-4. Yeshiva's 21 runs in Game 2 are the most runs scored in a single game in the history of the program. The previous record was 19 runs scored in 2009 against NYU Poly. Yeshiva won that contest 19-17. The secret ingredient to a great baseball team is the same as a great pancake. You need good batter. The Maccabees finished the season with a 2-26 record, but will hope to carry this momentum from the end of the season into next year. The team has planned a road trip in search of new uniforms, and rumor has it they will be coming to New Jersey. Congrats to the women's softball team on setting a new program record for most wins in a season. They won seven games this season, shattering the record set last year of six wins. 
just saying, when I broke my grandfather's record collection, I don't remember any celebration. In fact, I was grounded for a week. The team finished out their season right before the Pesach break with a doubleheader against Fordham University. They won the first game 12-4 and were victorious in the second game 8-0. Senior Rachel Mursky hit her fifth home run of the season and earned the complete game shutout, striking out nine in five innings. The icing on the cake was being named and inducted into the Skyline Conference weekly honor roll. Congrats to the whole team on a great record-breaking season and looking forward to next year. That's it for me here. For more Maccabee scores and updates, be sure to check out whyumax.com. Let's go, Max! As per usual, we were flooded with questions from our fans, but this week we decided to go with one from Shelby Weller, a sophomore at Stern College, and she wants to know, Akiva, if you could be one superhero, which one would it be? Hmm, it's funny she asks, because I literally was just having this conversation with my grandmother this past week, and I decided if I had to choose one, it would be Iron Man, because A, I am a man, and B, Iron is like my third favorite element, so obvious choice. That's a great choice, Akiva. I see that. I see, I see it too. Well, that's it for this edition of A Week at a Glance. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. I'm Akiva Martyr. And I'm Ariane Pinchot. And you're watching Shield, Shield News. News.